How are you, Joe? I'm good. Simple is uh, right up my alley. You need a simple call, I'm your guy. Well, no, Simple, ser- man. simple Jack. S- seriously, though, Joe, it, it, you, you know what I mean by that, though. You know what I mean by that. It's it's simple. Catch, sideline, touchdown. Vikings win. I mean, what else What else can you say? Well, it, it is TV. I mean, that helps. Right. It's not like you're, you're doing it on radio where you have to uh, describe the scene. So uh, we have a great director and Rich Russo, and I let him do his thing, and I just shut up and enjoy it with everybody else. But it's not easy to do that. It's essentially, I'm giving you a compliment, even though it might not have sounded that way, Joe. You know what no, I mean? No, I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm deflecting right now. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I'll ask again. I mean, you've done a, a, I've been a lead announcer for Fox since 96. So, I mean, how do you stay in a moment like that? Nobody expected that. I'm sure you and Troy weren't even expecting something like that. No, it was like a lightning bolt. And uh, I got to be honest with you, my initial reaction, maybe I was right, maybe I was wrong, was for Diggs to get out of bounds. You know, when when you watch the replay and the time is in there, he caught it with three, maybe four seconds left. And I thought, duck out of bounds. And then that would have been stupid because he was wide open going down the sideline to the end zone. So, I, I, when, when you're in that moment and you're calling it, you think, okay, they need a pass to the sideline. They got to jump out of bounds and have a shot at a field goal. The last thing you think about is what happened is, you know, Williams makes that kind of diving, ducking action as the safety and Diggs makes the catch turns and goes up the sideline for the touchdown. I mean, that was the furthest thing from my mind. Mm. Joe Buck who called the Viking Saints yesterday, joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And where where does it rank for you from what you've called in your career, Joe? Well, considering that it was the first, in essence, walk-off touchdown win in NFL playoff history, uh, it's, it's certainly the most recent. Uh, it's, it's also uh, the, I, I think, most exciting for a singular moment. I mean, you just don't get those in the NFL, you may get those in baseball, obviously with a walk-off home run. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the Joe Carter home run that, that I didn't call. Sean McDonough called on CBS when he won it for the Blue Jays uh, back in the day where you just have that one stamp and that one moment that, you know, for Carter won a World Series and for Diggs and Keenum won a playoff game. Uh, it's it's top I don't know, two or three for me. But it, as far as football, I, I think it's it's probably number one for exciting moments that I've been a part of. Yeah, and 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 even to add to it again is the dream of this team to play for the Super Bowl in their home building. What is it like in that town? What did you take in in the two three days that you were there in Minneapolis St. Paul area, Joe? Well, I only I only got fake moon once from the Randy Moss. <laughs> oh, call, that's so that was good. <laughs> That's called uh, being ahead of the curve. Um, Nice. It was great. I mean, the the whole city, as you can imagine, is taken with this team. It's an easy team to root for. It's kind of got that underdog feel. And the stadium, I'm I'm jealous of Al and Chris to call that Super Bowl out of that stadium. It is, in my opinion, my humble opinion, the best stadium in the NFL uh, with regard to brightness, the sight lines, the – everything that's involved there. I I just think they hit a grand slam with that place. And so the stadium is just awesome. The place was louder than uh, any I've been in, in a long, long time. So what's it like at Bedlam? And now after that play, uh, you know, with, with one game separating the home team from in essence, a home Super Bowl. Uh, man, I, I can't imagine what that city would be like if, if they were looking at a home game for Zimmer's crew on the 4th of February. Yeah, the skull chant, if that goes uh, international, that would be quite something. That really so is. So cool. I mean, that moment uh, at the end of the game, which uh, was, you know, it becomes ridiculous, and I get it. The spread went to six points, and you, I, I guess you got to play it honest, uh, and you got to line up for the – theoretical extra point which nobody does and they just take a knee uh and it was a five-point game but when they had that moment out there and keenum was in the middle of that stadium think about where he's been a record setter at the university of houston uh, with regard to passing yardage and touchdowns and he was undrafted 
uh, unlooked at and signed with the hometown team. And then he went to St. Louis and then back to Houston and back to St. Louis and LA. And he was a placeholder for Jared Goff. And now he's taken that team in thrilling fashion to the NFC championship game. It's when he led that skull chant out in the middle of the field, that was just, that gave me chills as much as the touchdown uh, that was just an entire stadium and quarterback leading the chant. Everybody was on the same page. It was just beautiful. And uh, Joe Buck, of all the quarterbacks he's going to face in the NFC Championship game, it's the guy who was traded to St. Louis uh, because for Sam Bradford, for Chip Kelly, right? And yeah. then Bradford it, 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 goes. It, it, Bradford it's like goes. Six you, degrees of separation. Honestly, from the St. Louis Rams. It is, and, and you know, especially since the fact that Bradford winds up going to Minnesota because uh, of the injury to Teddy Bridgewater, allowing Wentz to get to the point uh, where he could start and then have such an incredible season. But he goes down, and the guy that steps in is Nick Foles, taking on the guy who also replaced. Sam Bradford, it really is only missing Kevin Bacon, if you think about it, Joe. It is, and uh, Jeff Fisher, for some weird reason. Uh, <laughs> I, it goes back to the Rams. I mean, Bradford was the number one overall pick. He was hurt. Uh, one of the reasons why that team and, and that franchise went down the drain and ended up in L.A., and then they all play musical chairs, and you've got Keenum against Foles with Bradford backing up Keenan or Keenum, all, all three of which were a member of a brutal St. Louis Rams team. I mean, it just doesn't make it. You can't even wrap your head around that. Do you think anybody in St. Louis is going to care to watch, though? What do you think? Uh, yeah, they watch. I, I think everybody here, as I sit here with snow on the ground, is mm -hmm. kind of over that whole thing. I, it, last year, there was a lot of bitterness. And mm -hmm. uh, in 2017, now 18, I think everybody's just watching football again, and uh, it is what it is. We hit on the number one storyline for the NFC Championship game, right? Are we missing anything? Obviously, there's the coaches as well. You got a backup quarterback in Doug Peterson trying to be the uh, Super Bowl head coach of the Eagles and Zimmer, who's been waiting forever for a job blossoming the way he has. Uh, is there, um, what, uh, what else? First blush do you think you're going to be talking I was, about uh, next Sunday? I was shocked to see uh, Stats Inc. hand me a page that had Zimmer 0 for his last 10 in playoff games that dates back to his days with the Cowboys as first a position coach, then a coordinator, then the coordinator in Cincinnati wow. where they went 0 for 4 during his time, 0 for 1 with the Vikings from 2015. So it had been a while for him. And uh, just a great, honest, what you see is what you get head coach. Uh, and, and like I said during the game, you know, at some point I want to see him say, Case Keenum has blown us all away. But he just won't. He just I, I think he's kind of fighting himself for that. And he leaves open a little crack when we met with him on Friday. He said, if we're down double digits in the second half, uh, I will not hesitate to go to Bradford because he throws it better than Keenum. Uh, Bradford coming off the bench, even though he hasn't played since, what, week four? Uh, so th there's a lot of there's a lot going on in this game that that doesn't have the sexiest uh, NFC Championship matchup with regard to the quarterbacks, but I think has one of the most intriguing matchups of uh, of NFC Championship game quarterbacks. I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, I can't wait to have you call it. Uh, you with Troy and the rest of the crew. Great job yesterday, Joe. Always appreciate the call when you're going from one place to the next and busy as all get out. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, be well, and uh, maybe we'll talk next week. I hope. Well, let's do that. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I don't mean to book myself. I'm, well, I'm not. I'm not begging. But I no. mean, if, if the opportunity were to come up and somebody cancels, like I don't know, the kind of people you like, Matt Damon cancels yep. on you. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, throw me a call. I'll, I'll see what I can do. You know what, Joe? Uh, we have just, uh, interestingly enough, unbooked Matt Damon for next yeah, Monday. That's true. And you're in. You're in. You're in Sharpie. <laughs> I just sharpied you in, Joe. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Well, your listeners can look forward to that. Uh, <laughs> great job, Joe. Great stuff. Thanks again. All right. See you, you guys. Got, that's Joe Buck. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.